As you know by now, Richard Tice, the Reform Party UK leader, has completely blown it. And he did this by throwing MP Andrew Bridgen under the bus when he asked legitimate questions regarding the jab. Something that even the mainstream media are slowly coming out of the woodwork and confirming people's and scientists' concerns. So those of you who watched my video on Richard Tice a few days ago and uh, probably noticed on social media, seeing as he's trending, Richard Tice was on GB News and told the presenter on camera that Andrew Bridgen was wrong in what he said and that he took the wrong approach towards it. Andrew Bridgen was, of course, publicly shamed by fellow members of Parliament, uh, by his own party and his party whip removed from him immediately. And that's because he wasn't following the narrative. And good for him. Though I disagree with uh, a lot of what Andrew Bridgen has done, I believe it's taken a lot of courage for him to come out and talk about this. And so ever since then, and um, I'll let you guys know, I was contacted by someone from the Reform Party who asked me to remove my video. Now, I won't name names, but this person is a Reform Party member and she claimed that my video was garnering too much negative attention towards Richard Tice and the party. She was promptly told where to go. And ever since this, um, well not my video necessarily, but the backlash in general on social media, Richard Tice has been on damage control. But it's all a little too late. And he's being a massive hypocrite, which just confirms really that Richard Tice is one of them. So this alone makes Richard Tice, in my eyes, a very dubious personality. So you can make of the following facts what you will. You see, Tice left his wife and family to live with Isabel Oakeshott. Now, Isabel Oakeshott wrote Matt Hancock's biography. So with that in mind, slowly but surely, things are adding up. So he tweeted this, I think it was yesterday. He said, and I quote... UK excess deaths, I have repeatedly called for full independent analysis of possible causes, example, ambulance delays, A&E and bed blockages, cancer delays and uh, the jab harms. I can't use the formal word because of reasons. And he goes on, it's urgent, emerging data raises over more questions and concerns, end quote. So why the hell would he tweet this? Well, we know why he would tweet that after throwing the guy who literally said the same thing, who quoted a scientist who had concerns and throwing him under the bus. So he threw Andrew Bridgen under a bus and then he says the same thing, literally. This is damage control. Richard Tice knows he's blown it and can't handle the backlash. And for someone from his party to ask me to remove my video criticising him is just a disgraceful. I mean, Nigel Farage, the founder of the Reform Party, and Richard Tice have both said they're all for freedom of speech. But if you think that Richard Tice's stance on the jab is shocking, then his statement by his number two, the deputy leader of Reform Party, Dr David Bull, will probably shock you even more. Because he tweeted this, Good and not before time, the jab may be mandatory for children, says Hancock. Of course, Hancock was the health minister at the time. Now, considering the party these two are leading, they should have, or they ought to have had, their fingers on the pulse of those who follow them, their supporters, their voters. But clearly, they don't. I can guarantee you, if you went on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere, I think you will find the vast majority of reform party members, supporters, would have voiced their opinions against this sort of thing. And they still do. And they and we are being clearly vindicated, thanks to the statistics. Of course, people are dying. People have been harmed. And that is not something to celebrate simply because you've been proven right. You know, like, oh, like the Remainers do. They are reveling, or they, they want... Britain to suffer and fail and go into poverty. That's what they hope for ever since we left the EU, to vindicate themselves. Now, going back to Dr. David Bull, 
uh, this was <laughs> he was reminded of this on Twitter ever since the Richard Tice uh, controversy. And his damage control statement on Twitter was even more pathetic, really. He said, and I quote, You have totally misrepresented me on purpose. That is shameful behaviour. I have never believed in compulsory jabs and don't believe children should be jabbed at all. Jabs should be a choice based on the best evidence available at the time. And yet, in this tweet, you can see he says, Good and not before time. Hoping that the jab is mandatory for children. What a hypocrite. So the Reform Party is finished. I don't think that Dr David Ball and Richard Tice can come back from this, no matter how much damage control uh, they try to you know, salvage what they've got left. And the Reform Party just simply isn't worth voting for anymore now. For me personally, there is no alternative political party. And I'll be damned if I, you know, vote any left-wing party to spite the Tories, which are also effectively a left-wing party. So I won't be voting at all. And it's also a shame because I really liked Reform Party's policies regarding other things. But there we go. I wonder what the patriotic alternative's stance on the jab is. I'm only joking. Anyway, that's my video. Hope you like. Let me know what you think in the comments. Will you still be voting for the Reform Party at the next general election, despite what Richard Tice and his number two, Dr David Bull, have said regarding the jab? Or have they blown it for you as well? Let me know in the comments. And that's that. Until the next time, have a great day. Look after yourselves. And Roger Trout.